So, like I said, my PAL1 is here after a little more than a month of waiting. I'm unboxing it for the first time. Let's see, get this baby open. Hello. It says hello. I am P A L one. Cute. And it says thank you. That's actually a nice touch. All right. mm -hmm. Two layers of bubble wrap. The words. PAL1 single board computer kit. In case you're wondering, the PAL1 is supposed to be a replica or a clone, to be more accurate, of the Kim one, which was a development kit uh, for the 6502 uh, when it was first released. Uh, smallest package has got a Voltage regulator, I'm sure it's an LM7805, it's got a couple of diodes, one zinger diode, one normal diode, and then it's got some uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, transistors, I couldn't tell you if they're PNP or NPN, I have a, I have a bill of materials, an interactive bill of materials, that's interesting, oh. And the schematic that I recognize. Um, very interesting. That'll come in useful. Okay. PCB. Stiff. Thick. Um, come on. I guess we're just going to have to open you. Oh, there we are. Oh yeah, a little thicker than, um, just a little thicker than uh, your average uh, PCB. Comparing that to, uh, yeah, comparing that to uh, my PCBs. Let's take a look here. My PCBs are, uh, no battery, hang on a second. So the uh, PCB looks to be two millimeters thick, and PCB the stuff that I'm usually working with is one and a half, a little less than one. Actually, one and a half. Let's try that again. Uh, I'm gonna have to. Okay, it, yeah, PCB is almost two millimeters thick, so it's stiff. All right, looks like I got myself some sockets, some nice buttons. I read that they had good buttons, and these are definitely much larger uh, buttons than. Uh, um, than the little tactile buttons that you get on uh, the cheaper projects. Alright, I got some chips. I'm sure there's a 6502 in here and a 6532, a RAM, a ROM, yep. 6532, 6502, RAM, ROM, and some TTL logic chips. Great. Looks like a bag of uh, um, 
uh, small tantalum caps and some radial caps. Uh, resistors, 1K, 220, 100. There's a pair of 47Ks and some 3.3Ks. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them, probably for these seven segments. Uh, you'll notice the uh, the digits are larger uh, and get you a size on that looking at 20 19 millimeters tall um, Quite a bit bigger than uh, on the on the the real Kim, so it'll be quite a bit more readable. And uh, one megahertz crystal. All right, I believe that's the unboxing right there. And I believe I have everything I need to begin assembling this, which will be a separate video, or maybe I'll put it all together, but. I mean, assembly looks to be like it's going to be an hour and a half, two hours. Talk to you later. Okay, I'm pleased to say that all the resistors are in place. They're not yet soldered in place, but they're in place. They're mounted. And uh, to avoid any more clutter on the back, I'm going to go ahead and solder these ones up and then snip the wires. But here you go. I'll let you know when I'm done. Soldering is just a matter of time and temperature. And if it's not doing what you want it to do, you're using the wrong temperature. That's all. It should flow easy. And give your soldering on there enough time to uh, warm up. Could be five minutes, could be three minutes, you don't know. But make sure it's the the same temperature that's going to be for the job. Before I bore you to death, I'm going to pause and finish this. Just thought I'd let you see my technique. And you'll see that this is all the solder joints made. All I gotta do now is start snipping. And I'll snip a few. And I'll pause the video so I don't bore you to death. And just see how I do it, that's all. And uh, I may or may not need to scrub this board with alcohol afterwards, depending on how much flux is left over. Um, but uh, generally, I like to test the board first, and if I have any troubles, then I'll then I'll scrub it. You know, pausing for now. All right. So there's all the resistors, which is the first step, and then all nice and snipped. All these ends go in the trash. Moving on to. Oh, I don't know. Let's do the uh, let's do the caps. All right, caps are all in. There they are. Lots and lots of uh, decoupling capacitors that need to be uh, soldered in. That's actually a very good sign. Uh, um, every uh, Every chip, including the TTLs, get their own decoupling capacitor. That's great. It says something about the design. Okay, moving along now. You can see I've got all the caps in. Nice, tidy, uh, eh, mostly tidy solder joints. Uh, I think what I'm going to do now is hook up the um, 
the barrel connector for the power and the LM7805 and just verify that I'm getting the voltages across the board where I need them. So I'm going to do that now. All right, well, ground is the middle one. I got nine coming in and I got 4.97 going out. So that's good. Uh, I'm not so sure if that's going to be enough heat sink uh, or not. He's got a, a little bit of a pad built in there. Uh, I could rivet that into place um, right here, or I could stand it straight up and put a heat sink on it. I, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet. But uh, looking good. Let's see if, um, if I can get any uh, voltages off the board in some other spots. Let me just take a few guesses here. Yep, there you go, positive and negative, 4.95 volts, making it all the way down here. Uh, I'm not even going to begin to guess where the voltages are on a 6502. Um, right here? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'd have to look at, well, it looks like, it, oh, looks like I got it, uh, 4.97 volts, but it's backwards. So it looks like, yeah, alright, so, um, yeah, voltage is going to the board correct voltage is going to the board um, I'm just going to continue to solder thanks for uh, watching by the way I hope you've got good eyes because there's two NPNs and seven PMP transistors and it's you know even with my reading glasses on it's just so hard to read those but here are the two NPNs I'm going to keep them separated um, and uh, we'll get those welded up Almost done with the transistors. Just got this row of six. Six transistors, six digits. So you can pretty much guess what their purpose are. Again, soldering is just a matter of time and temperature. And temperature. Thank you. And less is better just like many things least amount of solder that you need to fill the hole you're not you can you can use too little and then you'll have like bad connections but you can spot those pretty quick um, anyway let me snip those up Doing pretty good so far let's see I also put the, uh, when you weren't looking, I put the uh, the two diodes in place. One's a Zener diode and one's a, uh, just a regular 41004 diode. Um, I think the Zener diode's purpose is uh, in case you uh, uh, over voltage or, um, um, you know, I, th I think it's, I think it'll sacrifice itself if you plug it in backwards or you over voltage. I'm not sure, but it's uh, uh, that, that looks like the way it fits into the circuit. I'll have to go back and look at the schematic later. But uh, almost done here with the tranny transistors. All right, see, not bad, huh? Not bad. Pretty good welds. I'll do a little clean up with the iron in a bit here. But uh, yeah, all right. I'm gonna pause for. A while. So I've got the sockets mounted, and um, I'm gonna weld them in a minute. But I just wanted to make a point that I find it ironic that we're socketing everything, including the TTL, but the LEDs appear to be intended to be soldered straight to the board, um, which. I think is odd because um, you know they're, they I would like to have them socketed as well and I may do that oops great now I gotta go find that um, but anyway I think that uh, I think that I am gonna uh, find a way to socket those um, with a header or something because if we're gonna take the time to solder even just the TTL glue logic then uh, you know why are we soldering the uh, the seven digit seven segment uh, digits straight to the board that doesn't it doesn't seem uh, uh, logical but anyway I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet never mind I'm using the headers see these headers here this is a header using conventional spacing 
um, but if I line this header up with the holes that are set up for the uh, I don't know how well you can see this but uh, with the holes that are set up I, you can see that the uh, they are not quite aligned um, so these don't fit the uh, these uh, aren't aren't gonna cooperate uh, in terms of using a uh, same header that you would use uh, on a uh, standard uh, PCB uh, because they don't have to I'm just gonna leave the taper on while I do the soldering and fast forward if you want again just time and temperature Come on, didn't get hit the temperature, but not the time. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get in there. Okay, keep those pins all the way. If you solder this wrong. You got 14 or or 16 or whatever pins that you'd have to unsolder uh, to get it right again. And that would be awkward. So I always get it right. Let's see. I guess I shouldn't. Probably the right thing to do would be to solder two of them to lock it in place. They're opposite of each other. Make sure it's flush with the board. That could be a little more flush, so let's warm that up. Okay. And now that it's locked in place, finish soldering. I like this board. The pads are decent sizes. When you're uh, when you're soldering uh, uh, sockets, the you really don't have a lot of choice on the size of the pads because uh, um, because of the way they're spaced. But where possible, he's using a decent sized pads, and uh, um, you can see a lot of thought went into designing this board. Let's just hope uh, I don't see any reason why this won't be right the first time. So. Wouldn't recommend this as somebody's first project or even second, um, but if you have some experience, um, you know, it's not like this, you're doing any uh, surface mount soldering. It's, uh, this is all through hole. Um, it's just a matter of patience. And uh, um, it's all very doable. Uh, again, if you're soldering and you're not having any luck with the solder sticking, then you're doing it wrong. Pause. Um, uh, make sure your iron's hot enough. Make sure your tip is clean. Make sure your tip's been tinned. Um, you know, practice on something else and then come back. Uh, do whatever it takes to, to get it right. Because you don't want to uh, butcher up a board like this with a whole bunch of solder blobs and stuff like that. Uh, you want it to look good. And you want it to work right. And, you know, if you've got a lot of solder blobs and stuff, you might even get it to work right. But you know, it'd be so much harder to troubleshoot. Uh, it's ugly, um, you know. And I mean, this is—we're obviously not doing this uh, 
because it's a high tech device here we're doing it because it's a work of art so let's treat it that way oops sorry about that work of art trying to clean the tip a little bit Tips get dirty. Wow. Alrighty. Well, I got a lot more to go. Um, I've only done not even half of all of these, so uh, I really don't want to bore you to death. I'm going to pause. Alright, so I finished all of the. Uh, all of the um, sockets and they're looking pretty good I didn't see a whole lot of uh, you know over flux or anything oh I see one that needs to be redone reheated up right here but uh yeah got looking good looking good let me uh, fix that one I just noticed and um, look at that just need to reflow it there you go and uh, um, reflow a couple more of these uh, yeah they're uh they're in. They're good. So, give you guys a, a nice look at the board before it's been cleaned. But it's come along nice. Alright. So, stand by. More to come. Okay, the, the digits are on. Looking pretty nice. What do you think? Yeah. Alright, i got to snip all those uh, wires back there, but... I'll leave them on for now. Um, I'll get them later. I'm going to make sure I cut them nice and uniform so it looks good. I'm putting these buttons on now. I really like the way they feel. They're big too. I mean, and uh, I guess it's really important to make sure the buttons go on nice and flat and straight. So they don't look crooked. Just like uh, you don't want anything looking crooked uh, on your board. Again, you know, um, somebody took the time to design this. We should take the time to assemble it correctly. And, uh, um, you know, this this is not, uh, these are not cheap buttons. Um, these are really good ones. And uh, um, I was a little worried when I saw you know, the pictures and stuff like that. Because uh, I saw the buttons and I'm thinking... Wow, those are the buttons. The board must be really, really small. But what it is is the buttons are big and the board is good size. Um, uh, so here we go. I have uh, high expectations. This is going to go well. I love the way things are fitting together. Um, and, uh, you know, I have yet to actually read the instructions if there are any. Um, I'm pretty sure there aren't, except online. I'm sure there's a. I know there's a PDF online for a, a user's manual, but uh, I have yet to uh, to look at it um, because this is pretty straightforward assembly. Anyway, I'll get these uh, buttons soldered on, and I'll let you know what happens. All right, so I only soldered one post for each button because I want to flip it over and make sure they're all still flush and they didn't wiggle loose. I want to make sure they're all nice and straight and beautiful, and they are. So I will do the remaining pins. Yeah, this I'm mean, just you can hear that, can't you? I mean that's just nice. Okay. okay, I put some jumpers in here. One of them's a uh, memory selector. Open is expansion. Close is on board. Well, we're not using an expansion, so I will close that by jumpering it. The other one, this one kind of torques my bolts a little bit. Um, it's the I.O. selector, and it's a jumper, and you have a choice between keypad and RS-232. Well, that should be a switch. 
it should not be um, uh, a jumper because uh, I really feel that should be a switch. I spend a lot of time uh, alternating between keypad and RS-232 and I, I think other people do as well um, when I'm working on a, a Kim or a, a other Kim clones. So, you know, why that's not a, 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 a better way to toggle between the two, I, I don't know. I, I think that was a mistake. But, um, um, you know, minor quibble. I'm going to continue. Oh, in fact, uh, the only thing I've got left to do now, because I don't think I'm going to put this header on just yet, uh, and when I do, I'm going to use a, uh, I'm not going to use that single spaced header. I'm going to... Uh, take care of uh, installing all these parts here and the 6502 is actually a real 6502 and not the 65 um, 65c in the alignment is not the same as the memory so just know that the alignment on the 6502 is well, my, my hand is this way uh, with pin 1 being here and with the memory pin 1 is there um, so the notch is on this side for the uh, for the memory, the riot chip, and the 6502, the notch is on this side. Uh, so just know that. I'm going to put these in. Uh, I'll see you in a second. Okay. Look. She's assembled. Looking good on the back. Looking good on the front. Um, make sure you use your reading glasses. Let's. I wish there was an on-off switch, like on the Corsham, but there isn't. So let's, okay, look at that. Let's do a reset. And zero, 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 looking good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a little bit of code and put it in, and I'm gonna let you watch me put the code in, and then, uh, We'll see what we get. I just love these large digits. That's nice. Okay, so uh, hold on while I grab that code. Okay, I'm going to enter by hand uh, all the hex code for WAVE, which is, um, I don't know, hold on a second. Maybe I'll find something shorter. Yeah, this one's going to be a lot shorter. I don't feel like putting in all that. So, um, uh, watch me. So, uh, zero, two, zero, zero, and DA, because we're going to do direct access of the memory. A9, let's see, A9, where's the plus? Here we go. 7F, 8D, 4, 1. Oh, I'm backwards. Hold on a second. Reset. Zero two zero zero. Okay, so um, the numbers are are labeled in the bottom. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so let's start all over again. A nine. Oh, I really did screw that up. One second. Reset. Zero two zero zero D A A nine plus seven F plus this is gonna take a little getting used to. Make sure I got that right. Zero two zero zero zero. Oh, uh, address zero two zero zero. Now I did that wrong again. D A. Oh, A nine plus and then seven F. And it, it, I just have to figure out where these buttons are. Um, see, I, I see the seven and I want to hit the three. That's what. Uh, 7 F 
and then plus, okay and I'm gonna not bore you so uh, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm done here in a second okay it was a little difficult because the numbers uh, are the keys are labeled on the bottom instead of on the top so like uh, along the bottom row here if you look uh, it's zero one two three all the way up and I would have uh, intuitively I was thinking it'd be on top so when you look at the four which is here it makes you want to press this button and you know, it just kind of messes you up and like the plus and all that so it took me a, a lot longer than usual to get used to it and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna build keycaps and, and label these keys somehow because uh, I, I can't work with them being like that but uh, uh you know that's all right it, it worked anyway so uh uh, the other thing I notice is if you tilt it up at an angle and you look at it, it's a little less confusing um, uh, doing that. At least it was for me. But I'm at 0200. Uh, here's the data that I just entered. If you want to take a look, let's hit the plus button. There it is. Okay, a whole bunch of it. Okay, go back to 0200 and run. Go, I mean. And what do you know? What's it say? It says, hello. So, um, we, we've done well. It's a great project. Uh, the time now is 6.04. I started at a little after 4, so not bad. Um, just under uh, 2 hours, and I have a working um, Kim 1 replica. I'll be working more with it later, uh, uh, giving a lot harder things to do than just say hello, but if we can get this far uh, on a first try, that's not bad. Thank you for watching, everybody. Oh yeah, here, here. In case you couldn't see it very well, uh, I turn the lights down. Hello, pretty cool. A working computer, wonderful. Technology like it's 1976.